Y'all ready? Everybody ready up here? Yeah. I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. Monk's ready, right? We're all ready. Y'all ready? Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Easter. Amen. I know it's good to, good to see y'all here today. Well, I want to welcome you to Stony Run Pentecostal Free Will Baptist Church. I'm glad you come out today to, to worship with us. I'm uh, just going to hit a few announcements here this morning. I want to remind everyone that tomorrow night um, we'll have no intercessory prayer here. I want you just to enjoy the Easter holiday with your family and your friends. Uh, next Saturday at 10 a.m. will be the ladies' ministry meeting here in the Family Life Center, so please uh, ladies, put that on your schedule. They'll be making birdhouses, I believe. So please see Miss Danette, which she's off gallivanting around with her husband for their anniversary. They're up in the Amish country. So so uh, please keep them in prayer this morning. And also uh, all those that have suffered loss. We um, are so thankful for you all to come out this morning. I do want to welcome you all. And so I'm going to go ahead and have the ushers come forward for the offering. And then we'll uh, we'll go ahead and get started. go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just thank you for this day you've given us, Lord. Lord, you're so good to us. Day in, day out, Lord, you are there every step of the way. So Father, as we give back today, Lord, I pray that you would bless the gift and the giver, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. been swallowed in victory. Morning has broken the cords away. There's no reason to fear. Why seek the living among the dead? Jesus our Lord is not here. He is alive. He's not here. Where
Jesus has set me free. Yes, he has. <laughs> and isn't it awesome that we serve a risen Savior today? Amen. Um, who's still in the business of healing, still in the business of saving souls. And that's what it's all about. Amen. I'm reminded every day of the price that was paid for me and you. And uh, as we go to the Lord in prayer today, I was also reminded this morning in Sunday school class all the benefits that come from that day when Jesus gave his life, but especially the third day when he rose. Amen. There is a joy, a hope that comes along with that, that we will have eternal life. We do want to remember this morning Miss Dorothy Tart, which is Brother Danny's mom. Um, we want to remember Miss Peggy West and the uh, Robert West family. And uh, also Miss Elaine Reardon, your family, lost their mother this week. Um, and if there's anyone here who needs prayer today, please come forward. We would love to pray with you. We'd love to pray for you. We know there are people on your hearts and your minds. Um, lift a hand up to God. Give it to him today. Let's pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you for this day, Lord, this day of celebration. Lord, we celebrate not only your death, Father God, for each and every one of us, but the fact that you were raised from the dead. You defeated death that day on Calvary, that we all might be able to live eternally with you. Lord, we lift up these ones today who are in need of a special touch, Lord, and we give it to you. Father God, you know all things. Nothing surprises you. We lift the folks up in Ukraine today, and we thank you that we live in a nation where we don't live in fear. We can come and do what we do here today, and we can praise your name. Lord, I pray I never see a day when I have to do what we do here in secret. And I thank you for that. Lord, I thank you for each one that's here today. And Lord, I pray your anointing be upon this congregation. I pray that if there's one here that doesn't know you, Father God, that everything that is said and done and preached and sang that is done here today, it was worth that one to come to know you as their Lord and Savior. I thank you for saving my soul. And Lord, I just give you the praise and the glory for all of it. Lord, be with us today. Keep us safe. Make our hearts receptive to your word. And to you be all the glory. Your will be done always. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
still call me friend. Cause the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. And there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's not
who am I that the Lord of all the earth would care to know my name would care to feel my hurt who am I that the bright and morning star would choose to light the way for my ever-wandering heart not because of who I am but because of what you've done not because of what I've done but because of who you are I am a flower quickly fading here today and going tomorrow a wave tossed in the ocean a vapor in the wind still you hear me when I'm calling Lord you catch me when I'm falling and you told me who I am I am yours I am yours Who am I that the eyes that see my sin would look on me with love and watch me rise again? Who am I that the voice that calmed the sea would call out through the rain and calm the storm in me? not because of who I am but because of what you've done not because of what I've done but because of who you are I am a flower quickly fading here today and going tomorrow a wave tossed in the ocean a vapor in the wind Still you hear me when I'm calling Don't you catch me when I'm falling And you told me who I am I am Not because of who I am, but because of what you've done. Not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading, here today and gone tomorrow. A wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor in the wind. Calling. Lord, you catch me when I'm falling, and you've told me who I am. I am, I am yours. I am yours. I am yours. shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Cause I am yours. I am Praise the Lord. I'm going to clean some of this stuff off up here.
Easter 2022. Amen. It's good to see the church full today. Amen. I like to see that. I like to see all y'all smiling faces out here with us today. Praise the Lord. It's good to see y'all. We, you know, I, I was thinking about this. Why is it that at Christmas we always read the Christmas story, but at Easter we very rarely ever read the Easter story? I mean, you know, it's like, it's like everybody goes to, you know, the, the go-to scriptures in Luke for the, East, or for the Christmas story, you know. And, and so as I was reading through Luke chapter 24, speaking of, of Easter day, of that, of that Sunday morning that, that Christ rose, you know, we, we don't really put the whole picture together. Now, I wish I had enough time today where I could preach the whole chapter of Luke 24 today. That'd be cool. Because it's all one piece. I don't know if you realize it or not, but you know, your Bibles tend to break things up into chunks and into pieces. And you don't feel the flow of the story like it should, but it's really all one long day. All these things that happened from the time that the women came to the tomb early that morning, the road to Emmaus, when he appears with the disciples, all those things happen in one long day. But see, we all, it's always broken up in little pieces. It's always broken up. And, and I was sitting there trying to figure out, man, how can I get it all in today? Well, you know what? I can't get it all in today. Amen. I can't do it. I can't do it. So what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and read from Luke chapter 24 to start. And then we're going to go from there and take a look at, at the Word of God. I feel like it's important that we, that we know the story, that we know what Christ did, that we know what happened on this day. So Luke chapter 24, if y'all want to turn there with me today, Luke chapter 24, starting in verse 1, I'm going to read the first 12 verses to kind of get us going, and then, then we'll go from there. I feel like that there's, this is absolutely a time where we need to be in the Word of God, but we also need to put ourselves in, in the places of the folks that were there that resurrection morning. See, the thing is, what we do and what we have the, the opportunity that we know the rest of the story right? We know how it ends, right? The people that were going through this stuff at that moment, in that time, they didn't know how it was going to end. They didn't know what was going to happen next. They didn't know that, that Christ was going to rise. They didn't know those things. They'd been told those things. They'd been, they've seen them in scripture. They've seen all these things, but they did not know it. And I feel like that as we live our, our Christian walk in our lives, that we need sometimes to realize that in the midst of it, that we might not know what's going to happen, but we know who holds tomorrow. So we need to make sure that we have that. So Luke chapter 24, starting in, in verse 1, tells us this. It says, Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments, and then, as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth and said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and told these, all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. And it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. And their words seemed to them like idle tales, and they did not believe them. But Peter arose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down, saw the linen cloths lying by themselves. And he departed, marveling to himself at what had happened. Father, I pray that you would bless your word today, Lord, as your word goes forth. Father, I would ask that you would, would hide me behind the center cross, Lord, that they would, they would hear from you today. Lord, use me as your ambassador today. But God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would have his way in our midst. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I... I I, I want to look at this for a second because I, I think that that as you as you look through this, you see how how people handle grief. You may say, "What do you mean grieving? It's Easter. He's risen. 
Amen? He hadn't risen yet. At least not in their minds. See, I want you to understand, when you, when you walk this world and you, you live out your faith, your Christian walk, you, there's many times where we, we face things in life where we don't know how it's going to end. Amen? Y'all ever been there where you're in the midst of it? You're in the midst of the fight? And I'll give you one other thing, that a lot of times people can give you words of wisdom and advice and things, and when you're in the midst of it, when you, when you don't know what's going to happen, you know what happens? Your mind goes blank. You forget everything you've been told. You forget everything you learned. You don't know. You can't remember anything. A lot of times folks say, well, they were told that he was going to rise. They were told that on the third day he would rise. They were told all these things. But I'm here to tell you, when you're grieving, you've just seen the one that you thought was the Messiah, the one that you thought would never die, that he was crucified and placed in a tomb dead now things have changed in the word of mike tyson i love this you know the theologian mike tyson he said everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face amen <laughs> but that's the truth y'all I mean, everybody has a plan until whatever happens, happens. Until, until, it, until it hits you, you don't know. Now, see, so they're, they're getting it together, right? They, they have they placed the body in the tomb. Now, these women, they're going there. They're going to the tomb not for a resurrection. They're going to the tomb for a funeral. They're not looking for a resurrection. They're, not look, they're looking for a dead body. They're bringing spices. They're, bringing, they're going to go anoint the body. They're going to do the things. They are going to go for a funeral. That, that's, how, that's how some people handle grief. What do they do? They do exactly what they're supposed to do. Some people, all they can do when they're grieving is they put one foot in front of the other. They keep going. You keep going. These ladies were keeping, they were just going to keep it going. They were going to keep moving. I mean, that, that's the way some people handle things when they're grieving. These women were grieving. Christ was dead. He was in the tomb. They saw him dead. They saw him placed in there. They knew that. And so they're, they're grieving. And, and what do they do? Well, we're just going to come. We're going to keep doing what we're supposed to do. We're just going to keep putting one foot in front of the other. We need to go and we need to take spices. We've, we've got these spices together. We've prepared fragrant oils. We've done all these things. Now we need to take them to the tomb. So they come come to the tomb bringing the spices they're coming for a funeral not a resurrection but then they find that the stone is rolled away from the tomb well that was absolutely just a crazy thing what what could happen in other uh, gospels well they they actually discussed who was going to roll away the stone this was a, a big stone it was something that was very heavy it would have been very difficult for them but they show up and the stone is rolled away from the tomb wow well, then they go in, and they don't find the body of the Lord Jesus. Now, I'm here to tell you that if you show up for a funeral and the body's gone, <laughs> that kind of messed you up. <laughs> Remember, they're not looking for a resurrection. They're looking to have a funeral. And see, and see that's the thing. Okay, well, now, oh, something, there's something that's not right. There's something going on here. They, they've come in. They're going to do what they're supposed to do. They're, they're looking for a body. And, and, and so they are absolutely perplexed. It, it says, and, and it happened as they were greatly perplexed. They don't know what to do. They, 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 they go and they look. That behold, two men stood by them in shining garments, these, these angels that were there. Okay? Then it says, and then as they were afraid and, 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 and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He's not here, but he is risen. I mean, I want you to think about this. These angels tell these women, look, you're, you're in the wrong. We're not having a funeral today. Look, that's one thing that I know the Lord can do. He can mess up a good funeral. I mean... Man, he comes through and, 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 and raises the dead. There's things that happen. So now they're, they're, they're not going to have a funeral that day. Why? Because they, he, they, he's not there. He's risen. He's risen. Now, now see, this is absolutely... Uh, now, now, you talk about perplexed. You talk about wondering what, what's going on. You wonder what this is going on. He, then they tell them, remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee. Remember what he said. He said it over and over and over again that he would be crucified and on the third day he would rise. And, and Peter rebuked it for him. All these different ones rebuked Jesus for what he was saying. They could not accept the fact that he was going to die. He said he's not here. 
But he's risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. So they're telling them, look, remember what Jesus said. Now, now I want, I want you to think about this because this verse 8 sticks in, in my mind. When I, when, I, when I went through this and I started looking at this and started looking at what was going on, verse 8 says, and they remembered his words now i want you to think about that for a second remember they're grieving they're trying to figure it out they're trying to they're going for a funeral they're not going for a resurrection they, they've not thought about anything that he told them and now they remembered his words now i i, I reflect back to john 14 26 and and here's what i want you to to understand the holy spirit of god is 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 always active in 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 believers even even before pentecost even before those things that this holy spirit of god was active he was he was there and, and they talk about they remembered his words john 14 26 says but the helper the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that i have said to you i'm here to tell you that i feel like that that was a holy spirit moment for these women at the tomb there was a time where all of a sudden the spirit of god had fallen upon them and they remember yes that's exactly what they what he said that he would rise and he and and now now they that the whole thing has has flipped now it's flipped from from a funeral to a celebration now it's flipped from 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 a, a burial to a resurrection now everything has changed now they, they, they return now. They, they leave. They, they go. Now, now here's the bad part about having a Holy Spirit moment. Y'all ever had a Holy Spirit moment and everybody looks at you like you're absolutely crazy? You ever been in church where, man, the Spirit's moving on you that day and you're just like, man, you're really feeling the presence and power of God. And, and, man, and then you, you're, you're trying to tell someone, man, you just, God was just speaking to me so clearly. It was so awesome. I, I just felt the power and the presence of God. And they just look at you like, yeah. Y'all ever been there? Miss Jane, you know exactly what. She's back there shaking her head. She knows exactly what I'm talking about. There's times you try to, to testify to people. You try to tell them something that absolutely where God has done something amazing in your life. And most of the time, you know what people do? They look at you and say, yeah. Yeah. Really? Eh. He healed you. Eh. And people don't get excited. Brother, right? You can go tell them. You can say, man, I was in extreme pain. And I went home and I prayed and I took a nap. And within like 20 minutes, I woke up and I was absolutely pain free. And I've been pain free ever since. And you're like, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you're just excited about it. And everybody else is like, eh. This is what you're going to encounter here. Why? Because those women had been touched by God at that tomb. They remembered his words. They, they felt the power of the Holy Spirit coursing through them. They, they felt the presence of God. And they, so they, they go back and they tell all these things to the 11 and to all the rest. Now here I'm here to tell you that, that not only were the, the apostles or disciples there, but there was a gr group of people that were also there that day. There was a whole pile of people there. They were all there. They tell them these things. Verse 11. And their words seemed to them like idle tales. And they did not believe them. See, we come to church today, at, at Resurrection Sunday, Jesus has risen. All these things have happened. We're excited about what that means to us. We realize that, that he went to the cross, that he took our sins there, that, that God raised him from the dead to show that he had made atonement for our sin, that all of those things had happened. But on that day, they come back and they say, man, you will not believe this. We saw two angels there. The tomb is empty. All this is going on. He, he spoke to us. We, we remembered his words. He told us that that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise again and He has risen. And they're all like, y'all lost your ever love of mine? What's wrong with you? But see, we face the same thing as believers. Man, I've seen people healed. It just blows my mind. And I tell folks about it. You know what they do? Eh. I've seen people where their minds were changed by the Spirit of God, where they were absolutely changed 
You know what people? Eh. Why? Because if you're not experiencing Christ, and you're not experiencing His power and His Spirit, why then it's just, eh. Some of you today will leave this service today and say, Rick did a great job. And others of you will say, eh. He went too long. He went too short. He was too loud. I couldn't hear him. I couldn't understand him. He was too animated. He wouldn't stay behind the pulpit. He got behind out from behind the pulpit. He didn't. Right? Help me step off the stage. No, don't do that. Not on Easter. Come on. We got dinners to do and stuff. Look, I'm here to tell you, man, this is the greatest story that's ever been told. Amen. This is one where, where God sent his only son down to this earth that, 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 to die for us. Hallelujah. And then he rose on the third day. Oh, praise God for that. For the resurrection. They telling them the story and their words seemed to them like idle tales and they did not believe them. But notice this, and I want you to see something. Okay, so remember, you got the ladies that they're just going through the motions. They're going through, well, look, we need to make sure we do exactly what we've got to do because we're in grief, and, and that's how we handle it. We just keep going. You know, some people, they don't break down. Some people, they don't follow it into a million pieces. They just keep going, man. I got to keep going. I got to keep going. These ladies are keep going. They keep going, keep going. Then you've got another person that's in grief, Peter. Why is Peter in grief? Denied him three times. Cursed one of the times. Come on. I mean, he absolutely denied him. And Jesus looked him right in the eye. Now, I'm here to tell you, can you imagine the look? Can you imagine the look after you have denied him three times and then cursed the last? I, I do not know the man. And Jesus looked you right in the eyes. Man, you want to talk about have your spirit crushed? Whoo. How's Peter going to handle his grief? Peter arose and ran to the tomb. Why? Because he's hoping. Hope above all hope. Maybe he is alive. Maybe he did rise. Maybe this did happen. Maybe I can meet him. Maybe I can see him. Maybe we can get this thing. Started. Lord, one last time. What, have you ever had a time with someone where you said, man, if I could just say one more thing to them. If I could just tell them one more time that I love them. If I could tell them one more time that I'm sorry. If I tell them one more time, I, I, I just, I, I, you ever been there? That's Peter. Peter said, well, man, this might be my shot. Those ladies, oh, they, they, everybody else thinks they're speaking idle tales. But possibly, what if he is alive? What if he is there? What if he's somewhere? Because obviously he's not in the tomb. Maybe he's wandering around out there somewhere. Maybe he really did rise from the dead. Maybe every, all this stuff is really true. Maybe all this, maybe, maybe, maybe. And so he runs and runs. Stoops down, sees the linen cloths lying by themselves. Departs marveling to himself at what had happened. Peter went seeking Jesus. Can I tell you what happens when you seek Christ? You find Christ. Anybody here today, if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, I promise you, if you will seek him today, if you will search for him, you will find him. He will reveal himself to you. He will come and speak to you. Man, oh Peter, 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 man. Now I want you to think about this, okay? So you got ladies that were going through the motions. They're just trying to get through their grief. They got the spices together. They're ready to go have a funeral. They're going to do exactly what they need to do. You've got Peter that's racked with guilt over this loss that he doesn't know what to do. So he runs there. He's going to run down there. He's going to try to do this. But can I tell you, there's another reaction in here that I never really thought about. Because you know, I've read the book of Luke. I don't know how many times. You know, I never thought it was one day stuff. I missed that. All these years I've been preaching the gospel, and I miss the fact that from the beginning of Luke near, to, near about to the end of Luke, it's all one day. It's all one day. I didn't, the, the Bible's all broken up. They put these little headings in, you know, that, that talk about he is risen, a road to Emmaus, this, that, you know, the other, uh, you know, the disciples' eyes open, Jesus appears to his disciples, scriptures open, all this stuff. They, they break it up in pieces. It's one day. It's one story. You know, we need to read the Bible as what it really is. 
one piece. I mean, it's all together. And so I, I really kind of, as I started reading through this, I was like, oh, hey, this all happened. Like, do, 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 one after another. Now notice this. It says, now behold, two of them were traveling that day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. Now, I want you to remember this. Now, now think about this for a second. First of all, you've got, you've got the ladies who went to the tomb. They come back. Nobody believes them. Then you've got Peter, one of the apostles. He rises and runs to the tomb to check it out. But now you've got two of them. Two of them. Was, okay, well, well so, so when we look at the, the, who they told, right, it says that, that when they remembered his words, then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the 11, the 11 apostles, and then to all the rest. Okay? All the rest. All the rest means all the other people that were kind of hanging out there. There was other people there. It wasn't just, wasn't just the apostles there, but there were other people hanging out. But these other people, they were just like no-name people. They were people that you would never know what their name was, but they were around Christ. So you have these two men here traveling from, from that day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they, they walk and they talk together of the things which would had just happened. Now, now remember, they were told all these things, and yet they didn't really believe the women. They were with the others that said their words seemed to them like idle tales and they did not believe them. You want to know why I say they didn't believe them? Because they were leaving town. They were getting out of town. Jerusalem was where things were happening, but they were getting out. Of, you ever been so heartbroken about something that you decide, you know what, I'm just going to leave. I'm leaving it. I'm leaving it all behind. I'm just getting it all behind me. I'm going away from it. I'm going to get as far as I can away from there. You been there? Anybody ever been there where you decide, I'm going to cut ties. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to leave everything. They, they were absolutely heartbroken. Everything that they thought they knew, everything they thought they believed, had just been torn down in front of them. Now they don't know what to do. The Savior they thought they had, they believe he's dead. They believe he's not risen. They don't believe anything that these women have said. They seem like idle tales. They don't believe them. We're just getting out of town. I've had enough. I've had enough. I can't do it anymore. I mean, I see people all the time in grief that they run. Run away from the whole situation. We're not even going to deal with it. We're just going to leave. We're not going to handle that anymore. And so they talk together of all the things which had happened. They're talking about all the things that have happened in this last week. And it says, so it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Now, you know what's awesome about this? These are two nobodies. Y'all sung that song, Who Am I? These are two nobodies. We do find out the name of one of them, Cleopas. We don't know the name of the other one. And actually, we don't even know for sure if it was a man or a woman. I mean, there's some dispute about that. But what we know is there was two nobodies, some of the others, that were discussing, that they had give up, that they had give up on what was going on. They'd give up on the whole idea of everything. They have given up. And, and, and so they're leaving town. They're going as far away from Jerusalem. They're going seven miles, man. That's a long walk. And they walk together. They're, they're talking together. They're conversing. And Jesus himself draws beside them and comes up alongside them. Here, I'm here to tell you this today, that you don't have to be walking in faith for Christ to walk with you. He was like, oh, the preacher said that. Yeah, because he comes alongside us all the time. And we don't even know he's there. I mean, we, we all the time, we think that we work our salvation out. Well, you don't work it out. You're saved by the grace of God. It's the gift of God. You've not done anything to deserve anything. If you live the best life you could possibly live, given everything away that you have, given your body for the church, done all these things, you could have done all those things, and that will not get you into heaven. Why? Because you're saved by grace and faith. It's the gift of God. And so if you're a nobody today and you're like, man, I'm just a nobody. Can I tell you, you may be going through things today and you're like, man, I don't know how I'm going to make it. I don't know what I'm going to do. Can I tell you that Christ may be walking alongside you right now in the midst of where you're at and you don't even know he's there. But he's still there. Y'all, that's the God we serve. That's the love of Christ, man. While we were yet sinners, he went to the cross and died for us. That's the Jesus, right? 
<coughs> so it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Notice this. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. How many times have our eyes been restrained? Where Jesus was right there with us. And we didn't see him because God wasn't letting us see him. Now I want you to think about that for a second. You know, we may have all had visitations that we don't know about. We may have all had times where, where the Lord's come right alongside us and someone came alongside us and spoke a word or, or prayed for us or, 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 or gave us a word of encouragement or encouraged us through a difficult time and we thought it was just some random stranger. Could have very well been our Lord and Savior. They're with us. Verse 17, he said to them, well, what kind of conversation is this that you will have with one another and as you walk and you're sad? They were heartbroken. I want you to understand, they were heartbroken. Everything they thought they knew about the Messiah, everything they thought they knew had just crumbled down around them. They never thought that the Messiah could be killed. They never thought that the Messiah would be crucified. They never thought that the Messiah would die. And now they know that he was laid in a tomb. And yes, there's some ladies that came back and told him that he is risen. And we think they're crazy. Because that's just idle tests of women. You know how women are. They just talk, 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 talk. See, do you know what the bad thing about it is? And I would never say that to you ladies because I love you. But back then, your word didn't mean anything. I mean, you'd better off have a criminal testify than a woman. I mean, I know that sounds terrible, but that was the world that they lived in. When these ladies showed up, they're just running their band. They are, they're beside themselves. They're crazy, right? What kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? And then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to them, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happened here in these days? I love this. I mean, it's Jesus. Of course he knows what happened. He was there for all of it. I mean, it's, it's ironic. As Luke tells this, that... Are you the only, what, you don't know what's happened? And so Jesus says, well, what things? Tell me about it. Can you tell me about it? Can you tell me what happened? Can you tell me what's gone on? And so they say to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. Now notice, they, they call him a prophet there. They don't call him the Messiah now. They call him a prophet. I don't know if that was kind of, you know, well, we... We know that if he was the Messiah, he wouldn't have died, but we're going to call him a prophet because a prophet could die, right? And so they, they say, look, he, he did all these things and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. I mean, they crucified him. They, they killed him. We were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. I mean, they're looking for the redeemer. They're looking for the one. And here he is the one that's going to redeem Israel. He is the redeemer. He is that one. Indeed, besides all this, this is the third day since these things happened. They even knew. I mean, they even knew that on the third day he was supposed to rise. That's why they're talking about the third day. They know, every, they know the story. I mean, I want you to think about this for a second. They know the story. And, and, and it says, yes, and certain women, now it's even better, certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. When they did not find his body, they came saying, that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. Man, I, I just, wow. I want you to think about this for a second. What? Today's, the third day. They obviously knew about the third day, that he would, he would rise on the third day. They, 
they have the women of their company telling him that the tomb was empty and they'd seen a vision of angels and that, that, that he, they said he was alive. And we even had some of our friends go to the tomb to check to make sure there was no body in there. And there was no body there. The body was gone. We could, they did, he wasn't there. Listen, think about this for a second. And this reminds me of some people that I know. They know all the facts about Jesus Christ and have no faith. How's that happen? How can you have all the facts? How can you know the whole story? How can you know everything about it? How can you have the testimony of people that say, oh yeah, you, you, oh man, we were there. It, it, the, the angel spoke to us. He said, the, the, man, the Son of Man must be delivered in the hands of sinful man and be crucified and on the third day rise again. And we remembered his words. Oh man, and, and we knew that, 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 it, that it happened. And, and yet y'all looked at him like they lost their mind. Facts without an encounter with Jesus Christ does not lead to faith. See, facts are stored right here. Right? And everybody in here can tell me maybe not every detail of the things that happened on that resurrection morn. But they can tell me the facts. The facts are Jesus Christ was crucified. Fact. Jesus Christ died. Fact. Jesus Christ was placed in a tomb. Fact. And on the third day, the stone was rolled away and he was gone and had risen just like they said he would. Fact. And yet, it's not made it from here to here. I've heard this said a lot of times. The distance between heaven and hell is about 18 inches. Because until you take this and you experience Jesus Christ as who He really is, the Savior of the world, the one that the grave could not hold, that one, until you experience that, it doesn't do any good. How many sit and listen to sermon after sermon after sermon after sermon, and it only gets here, and it never gets to here? I pray today that through the power of the Holy Spirit that you'll have one of those days like those women had when they were in that empty tomb, when they were perplexed, when they didn't know what to do, when they were completely beside themselves, where they were getting ready for a funeral and he was not there and they asked him, why do you seek the living amongst the dead? He's not here, but he's risen. Man, the Son of Man must be delivered in the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise again. I pray that today he would rise in your heart, in your spirit, that the Holy Spirit of God would just rise up in you. Because I'm telling you, man, Woo! Man, that is the power of the gospel. But facts without an encounter with Jesus does not equal faith. And then let's go a little bit further. So Jesus hears them speaking. He sees they're not exhibiting faith. He sees that they know all the details. They know everything that they need to know. And yet it has not resulted in faith. So what does he do? He says to them, oh foolish ones, and slow a heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Look, this has already been spoken. It's already in the scripture. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and enter into his glory? He, he's like, man, I can't believe that y'all aren't getting this. You've been around us. You know what's happening. You, you don't get it? Verse 27, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounds to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Man, I mean, wow. It, Jesus preaches them their own private sermon. I want you to think about it for a second. How well do you think Jesus could tell the story? 
The very one that inspired the scripture. The very one that was spoken of in the scripture. That he's the one. He's preaching them their very own sermon. I mean, he starts at Moses. He goes through all the prophets. And man, I'd have loved to hear Jesus expound this. Wouldn't that have been awesome to hear him preach one time? The power. Can you imagine the anointing and the power in Jesus Christ? Him speaking the gospel right directly to you to tell you, hey man, let me show you where it's at. Let me show you what's going on. Let me show you all these things. But here's the thing. He preaches them a sermon. He starts at Moses. He goes through all the prophets. They still don't know who he is. You don't think the Holy Spirit's got something to do with salvation? Man, I'm here to tell you without the Spirit of God, you ain't got no hope. I mean, that's, you know, I can stand up here and I can preach and preach and preach until I, I got two bottles of water today. I figure I'm good for at least two hours. Just kidding. But I can preach and I can preach and I can preach until the Holy Spirit opens your heart to receive the gospel message. You're not going to receive it. And folks can say, how can someone sit in church all their life and not get saved? Because without the Holy Spirit of God, without you allowing the Spirit of God to move in you, without you allowing God, because see, they're not acting in faith. They're not walking in faith. Why? Because they're walking away from Jerusalem. They're walking away from the empty tomb. They're walking away from the disciples. They're walking away from that whole thing. They're getting as far as they I'm going to Emmaus. It's seven miles down the road. I'm getting on out of here, man. I don't know about all that, but I just don't have no faith in any of that anymore. A person's direction tells you a lot about where their life is going. See, the thing about salvation, y'all, what we don't understand a lot of times is that when we get saved, all we've done is realized that we were going the wrong way. And now we're going to turn around and we're going to start heading toward Jesus. Not there yet not yet apprehended, but I press toward the mark, amen, that Christ Jesus apprehended me for. I'm pressing toward that mark. Why? Because I've changed direction. These guys are going to, to Emmaus. They're not going to Jerusalem. They don't have any faith. They're not, they're not going to do that. Verse 28, then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated he would have gone further. So Jesus is like, all right, guys, man, I've just, man, I've preached you your personal message. I've given you everything you need to know. I started at Moses. I worked all the way through the whole prophets. I told you the whole thing. You know what? Peace out. Contemporary Jesus, but it's okay. That's kind of the way he talks to me, but you know, I, mean, I know some of you, he talks in King James English. <laughs> I'm his child. I love him. Man, he speaks to me right here. Hey, man, we're close. He, he says, oh, I'm just going to head on out. But notice what happens. They constrain him, saying, abide with us. Stay with us. Stay with us. Something, they heard something. Something's happening. Something's working. See, and that's the thing about salvation. Remember, remember when, when God started pulling on your heart strings? Where he started? He started saying, you know, hey, there's more to this than what you think. Hey, you know, there, there's a Savior. His name's Jesus. Hey, this thing is real. God is real. The whole thing is real. They, they, they tell him, abide with us. It's toward evening. The day's spent. And so he goes in to stay with them. Now notice what happens when they start fellowshipping with Christ. It comes to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him. You know what that was right then? A miracle. A miracle. Do you know what salvation is? Every time someone receives Jesus Christ as their Savior, a miracle. 
Why? Because we are, we, we are not ones to have faith. We are ones to usually doubt things. We, are, we don't believe things. We refuse. We always want to ask questions. We always want to do all those things. And I'm here to tell you that in my life, man, it was a miracle when Rick Kelly got saved. When I decided, yes, I'm going to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior from this day forward. I am going to serve him. I'm going to follow him. Wherever he takes me, I'm going. And when that happens in our lives, that is a miracle. Their eyes were open. They knew him. And then he's gone. Wow. Man, why couldn't he stay there? Why couldn't he stay a little bit longer? Why couldn't he just walk with why can't he just walk with us every step of the way where we know he's there and we see him and we feel him every isn't that what we want? We want to feel the presence of God. Isn't that what we want all the time? We want him right there. I want Jesus right here beside me. I want to be able to see him. So every step I take, I know the, but I'm here to tell you that's not how it works. Oh, he's there. He's walking with you. Most of the time, though, you don't see him. But it doesn't mean that he's not there. And they said to one another, and I love this, in verse 32, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? The power of the Holy Spirit. Have you ever had your heart burn within you? Have you ever felt it when someone was preaching the gospel? When they were given a gospel message? Have you, ever, have you ever felt the power of God in such a way that your heart just pure burned in you? You may not even have been saved yet. You may not even have known what was going on, but you felt something. Ever been there? Man, I'm here to tell you, that's how God moves us. See, He burns in our heart. He burns in our bones. He burns in our soul. He lets us know. Man, when we start hearing the gospel, when we start feeling the Holy Spirit of God, we can feel His presence and His power. We can feel the inspiration in the Word of God. We can feel that because it burns within us. Oh, man, that we, we feel that presence. And notice what happens when they start feeling and realizing and understanding. Now they've seen Christ. Now they're going to act in faith. So they rise up that very hour and return to Jerusalem. Now they've gone all the way back. They were seven miles away. Now they've gone all the way back. They walked 14 miles that day. And they're coming back. They're coming back. Why are they coming back? Because they're going to tell everybody, hey, what those women were talking about, they were right. He is risen. We saw him. Oh, man, he broke bread, and there he was right in front of us. Oh, my goodness. He disappeared, but he was there. I'm telling you, I saw him. I saw him. What would people say to us today if we went to someone and said, man, I saw the risen Christ? What, were we, what if we were like the Apostle Paul on the road to Emmaus? Said, man, he stopped me dead in my tracks. Blinded me. I thought I could see. I couldn't see at all. I didn't even know. Man, but I saw Christ. What would people say to us? I can tell you what they probably say. They probably say, you can head on up to Dick's Hill. You've lost your mind. But I'm here to tell you, he still speaks to his people. He still ministers to us. He's still there. He's still out there. Oh, my goodness, whether you realize he's there or not, he's there every step of the way. He's right there with us. So they rise up. They return to Jerusalem, and they find the 11 who were with them gathered together. And notice this. Notice what the, the ones that are there are saying now. Now they're saying, look, the Lord is risen indeed, and he's appeared to Simon. Remember Simon? Simon was the one that jumped up when the ladies came. Nobody believed him. He jumped up and ran to the tomb looking Jesus. Guess what he did that day? He found the risen Lord. Woo! Y'all, I'm here to tell you, that's the power of Jesus Christ. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. That's the power of the gospel. That's the power of God. That if we'll seek him, we will find him. But you got to seek him. you got to seek him. If you're not seeking, if you're walking away in doubt, if you're walking away with no faith, if you're walking away and you're making every excuse you can not to believe, not to do, man, he could be right there with you. Every step of the way. And you don't feel his presence.
The women saw the empty tomb. But at first, all they were were perplexed. What's going on? What happened to the body? And they didn't believe until the angel reminded them of what Jesus said. And the Holy Spirit gave them remembrance. And even then, no one, no one believed them. But Peter went out in search of the Lord. And I'm here to tell you that if you'll seek Him, you will find Him. Today might be your day. Maybe today you need to leave here today and you need to find Jesus. Maybe today's your day. You need to find Him. I'm telling you, He may be closer than what you think because He's probably walking right beside you right now and you don't even feel His presence and His power in your life. Why? Because you've chosen not to know Him. Not to believe. Not to receive Him. See, you know what the scary thing about it is? When you receive Jesus Christ, your Savior, that you give up your will. See, this is how it works. If you're going to follow Jesus, then He is the boss now. We follow Him. He doesn't follow us. Two followers, Cleopas and his companion, left Jerusalem to Emmaus. They gave up hope. They knew all the facts. They recalled the testimony. The ladies had given them the testimony. Jesus preached to them on the way. But until they saw the risen Lord, they didn't believe. And God opened their eyes. Did not our heart burn within us while He talked with us on the road and while He opened the Scriptures to us? You know, when I read that, and y'all can go ahead and stand with me as we dismiss today. When I read that, I realized that something was going on in these two folks on that road to Emmaus. That before they believed, before they received Christ, there was something already going on inside of them as they heard the gospel, as they heard Jesus himself giving them the, the revelation, the gospel from Moses through all the prophets of who he was, their hearts were burning within them while he talked with them. They knew something was going on before they saw it. I just want to ask you today. Is your heart burning in you today? See what he's waiting for right now is for you to make a move. waiting for you to make a move. He's already moved. He's already risen. He's already sent the power of His Holy Spirit. That if you're here today in this gathered presence of believers, I promise you, the Holy Spirit of God is here in our midst. That's why we gather. Because He's here. If you're here today and you don't know Him, You can. And I open this altar today. If there's anyone that 
wants to know Christ as their Savior. Anyone here today where your heart's burning, man, you're feeling something today. I'm here to tell you, and it may be very uncomfortable. You may be sitting there saying, man, I don't know if I just need to run out the door or come to this altar. It's a hard place to be. I pray you come to the altar. You come and meet this one named Jesus. You come meet the one that the grave couldn't hold. The one that sits at the right hand of the Father, interceding for the saints of God. As they sing this last song, this altar's open. You want to know him today? Come on up and see me. Amen.